So hello my friends and uh, welcome to this first video in what I hope will be uh, a series uh, I intend to make on wildlife filming, uh, tips, techniques, tricks, things that will help you uh, get the best footage you possibly can. And to start off with, I thought we'd uh, look at the subject of frame rates and in particular um, how we uh, set our shutter speed according to what our frame rate is. That's the basic foundation stone of uh, getting the kind of effect that you want to achieve when filming wildlife in particular. Uh, and not just wildlife, in fact, for pretty much every kind of filming that you want to do. Uh, it's absolutely key that you get your frame rate uh, nailed. I thought I'd start with this subject, apart from it being the very basic uh, foundation stone of filming. Um, when I was leading the photography workshops here uh, back in January, um, there were a lot of photographers, uh, guests, who were trying their hand for the first time at um, doing some filming. And um, a lot of them were struggling to, uh, to, to achieve uh, what they wanted to. Uh, and it all came down to basically having the incorrect shutter speed uh, for the frame rate that they were shooting at. And it comes about basically as wildlife photographers um, having dialed in their exposure uh, mostly to freeze the action of the subject they were, film they were photographing, um, they would then switch to video mode and carry on shooting at exactly the same settings because that was the right exposure. And uh, the result was mostly jumpy footage, uh, very stuttery and not the smooth flowing um, film that they hoped to create. So, trying to get your head around um, frame rates is absolutely key in, um, in filming. So, I'm not going to uh, get into too much uh, detail about the science behind frame rate and shutter speed uh, and how they relate to each other. Um, I've actually written an article on my blog page with a little bit more detail, uh, which you can have a look at. I'll put the link on the screen here and in the description below. So feel free to have a look at that. Um, what I want to do is cover the very basic settings, um, which will help get you started uh, and on the right path. I should also add that uh, this video for a lot of you uh, will be too basic. You'll already know this stuff. Uh, in which case, please feel free to ignore me um, and uh, hopefully come back in another video where I'll go into uh, other techniques you might not know, tips and tricks and what have you. So for those of you uh, coming at it as complete novices, um, what you should understand uh, is that there's two frame rates that you need to consider when um, recording video. The first frame rate is your project frame rate, your timeline frame rate. And when you open up any video editing software, um, you have what's called a timeline. And onto that timeline, you'll drag your video clips that you want to edit, cut, splice together, add your transitions, titles, effects, color correct, and all of that stuff. Uh, to create your film. And that timeline has a frame rate that you need to set, a project frame rate. That frame rate is unchangeable. Uh, once you've set it, before you start your project, you can't change it in the, in the middle. So the second frame rate is the frame rate that you're going to shoot at, and that is changeable according to what it is that you want to 
to do, whether you want to record something at normal speed, such as me now talking to camera, or if you want to record slow motion um, so that you can really see that fine detail uh, of the action in, in slow motion. Going back for a moment to our project uh, frame rate, we'd normally set the project uh, to a frame rate of 25 frames per second here in Europe, or I think in the US, 30 frames per second is the standard. Uh, and in some instances, they also use 24. Um, but I think 25 and 30 are the most commonly used uh, project frame rates. Okay, so what frame rate do I need for any particular instance? So if I'm shooting, if I want to shoot uh, normal motion, um, as I mentioned, such as me now talking to camera, um, I'd want to shoot at the same frame rate as my timeline so that there is a one-to-one -one playback. It plays back at exactly the speed of the timeline, in which case I need to film, also film at that same rate. So uh, basically for my timeline of 25 frames per second, I'd set in camera my uh, frame rate to 25 frames per second. If I want to slow things down, uh, I need to increase that frame rate. So if I want to slow, th slow things down just a little bit, I could set 50 frames per second on my 25 frame per second timeline. Or if I want to slow them down a lot, I can set it to 100 frames per second on my 25 frame per second timeline. The thing you need to remember is your shooting frame, frame rate should always be a multiple number of your timeline frame rate. So for my timeline of 25 frames per second, I need to shoot at 25 frames per second, 50, 100, 200, etc. Always a multiple. If my timeline is 30 frames per second, again, I need to shoot at 30 frames per second, 60, 120, 240 frames per second. Always a multiple of that of that uh, project frame rate. And that will give you the smoothest playback possible. Now, how does our frame rate relate to our shutter speed, which is the key thing? And it's basically a very simple rule, which is always set your shutter speed to double your frame rate number. So again, using my example of the 25 frames per second timeline, shooting at normal speed, 25 frames per second, I'd wanna be setting my shutter speed to 1 50th of a second. If I want to shoot slow motion, super slow motion of at 100 frames per second, then I'd set my shutter speed to uh, 1 200th of a second. It's always going to be double the number of your frame rates. The question then becomes, seeing as your, expo your um, shutter speed is already spoken for, that's fixed in stone, it's always going to be double your frame rate, um, you can't use that to control your exposure. Uh, so that leaves us basically with ISO and um, aperture to control our exposures with. Um, ISO you can set to the minimum value, okay, but you can't go further than that. And then aperture, you can close it down and you might have to on a bright sunny day. Um, but the problem is that you, you might not be able to achieve then the desired effect, which as photographers, filmmakers, we all love, the blurry background and all of that. Um, so we need another method of controlling our, uh, the light that's entering the camera. And that uh, would be achieved uh, with neutral density filters. Um, the easiest uh, one to use is the variable neutral density filter, which you screw onto the end of your lens, and then you can adjust the amount uh, of, um, of light you want blocked just by 
spinning the filter around. Um, you could also get fixed neutral density filters, um, which most likely uh, have better optical qualities, uh, but then again, you'll be, if light changes, then you'll need to be fiddling around, uh, switching out filters, which you might not want to do. So, uh, a variable ND is the way to go. Um, if you're shooting on very big lenses, uh, which a lot of us uh, use for wildlife, you're not going to find uh, any kind of filter that'll screw on the end of uh, a big 500 mil lens. Um, what you can do though uh, is use drop-in filters. Most of the the big professional lenses have a slot at the back um, that you can drop a filter in and you can get a variable ND filter for that purpose. If you are lucky enough uh, a lot of the modern cameras um, that are more video centric than photo centric um, they might have a setting called shutter angle such as this one that I'm shooting on now, the Panasonic Lumix S5 uh, in which case you can set your shutter angle to 180 degrees and you'll never have to think about shutter speed again it will automatically uh, set to uh, double whatever your frame rate is and you don't have to worry about it ever again. Uh, for those of us shooting on some older DSLRs or on mirrorless cameras that don't have shutter angle available as an option, um, you just have to keep in mind uh, that uh, always set your shutter speed to double your frame rate. Okay, so in a nutshell, that just about covers it. The basic rule, just to uh, reiterate one more time, is to always set your shutter speed at double whatever your frame rate is. And if you do that, uh, you won't go wrong. So I hope you've enjoyed watching. I hope it's been useful. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. And I shall catch up with you again soon with another video. Uh, the next one I plan to do is on um, putting together a sequence. Um, so I shall catch up with you then. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.